episode of the Long Run Podcast is sponsored by Sketches. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Long Run Show, live stream and podcast brought to you by the 40 Runs Running community and our generous sponsors, Sketchers. Sorry, a bit late. My name's Ian Wilkerson, and I'm joined this evening by Chris Ford. Alan Bowley's back with us. Had a few Hello, technical issues, but fingers crossed we're going to be all right. And because uh, we've got the tech wizard back, Tobes back in the house tonight. So things should be a little bit more smooth. So tonight so. we are talking about getting started and becoming a runner now not necessarily um picking up you know thing i've got to get a pair of trainers and the initial steps more sort of like getting going and mm. getting into the nitty-gritty of actually being a runner isn't it chris that's the sort of like the idea behind this one yeah i'll tell you what it is it's um November, 40 runs, fifth birthday is November. And it, and it made me think back about how we all started all this sort of stuff. And I was having a conversation with somebody and it made me think that this week it's worth going back a few steps because we get all caught up with training plans and we're training for this and ballots for that and, and all this sort of stuff. And I thought, actually, let's go back a few steps. Let's, let's think about what we need to do to be a runner. Maybe, I don't know, you're coming back from injury or... You're, you've got a place in the Great North Run, London Marathon, Boston. No, not out yet. Bad example. Um, but, or literally you're couched to 5K. But w what's the sort of the fundamental things? What what can we discuss that might actually add a little bit of value um, to somebody who's maybe coming back, thinking about, you know, coming back to running, starting out on a, on a plan or a path to a goal or something like that. So just a few little sound bites a few little things that we've all picked up on that may actually help you and even if you're a seasoned runner i actually think that some of this may cross over and say some of this may actually mm. yeah it's not the time to switch off you think oh well i've no. been running for ages oh I don't yeah know and 84 this. marathons and no. all that because a lot of it is um be a lot of it will be applicable to when mm. um if, you, if you've had a knock or a little bit of time off you might have been out with all that yeah. with all that to invariably we've all had to bounce back from having COVID at some juncture in the last sort yeah, exactly of just right. that way of getting going again and the way that you can motivate yourself and get back out there and do your stuff now but before we get stuck into that there's a bit of business to do yep. it's the last chance saloon for your free tickets for um the national running show I think it's up on yep. when's the 21st Monday 21st that's important yeah so yeah, 21st. the address is on the bottom here if you can see it it is um you get nationalrunningshow.com use the code 40 runs get your free ticket come mm -hmm. along because we we're doing we're doing our first live gig which um we're we'll we'll very on. very excited about i mean we're, i'm not being funny Wilco. we we couldn't even get this show started on time tonight right what chance right. have we got the National Running Show. Anyway, well, we'll matter. be under all this sort of pressure because we won't just be sat in our living room looking no, in a, into a laptop, will we? We'll be we in be. front of thousands of people at the NEC. Yeah, Wilco, we won't be under any pressure. Me, you and Al, we'll be bowling about the place like we own it. The person who's going to be under pressure is young Toby. If there's the anything geezer. wrong, right? So tonight, right, so we all had a few technical issues. That's on us, right? Individual basis. But when we're at the National Running Show, that's all Toby's fault. Anything goes wrong at that show, Toby's fault. So it's we'll go oh. out. We we can just chill, boys. We can just relax. And then anyway, more importantly, after that, so forget all that. We're going to go up there. We're going to blow everyone away. We're going to make you know all these pros go, you know, get paid millions to come up and talk. We're not taking any money. We're coming up there, any value to all you everyday runners. And then, but more importantly, after that, we're going for a run. So if you want to join mm -hmm. us, get onto Strava, Forty Runs Club on Strava. Join that. There's already millions of you coming. The only thing we say is please bring a light so you can see where you're going. But yeah, make sure you jump onto Strava and come along for the shakeout run on the Saturday um, evening just for something to do. So that's really important. And who else are we doing? Oh, we've got to give a shout out to everybody on the live stream. If you're listening to this on your run, we do this. We record this live, hence why we was late. Um, 
get your comments in, questions in. Uh, any tips for, you know, anybody who's coming back or starting running and all that sort of stuff? Anything you want to know about? It doesn't even need to be running related. We're happy to talk about anything. We're happy to talk about moustaches and we'll come on to that in a minute. Um, yeah, well, we all talk about that. Stick that in there. So, yeah, so um, you may notice if you're watching this, if you're listening to this, you won't see it. But I feel like I've, I feel like I've gone Tom Selleck. Al's looking. Ve- I actually think Al, that's working for you, by the way. And we'll kind of look. Al. What's that? That's worrying a lot of people that it does kind of, kind of work. It does suit you, bro. Oh, I like. You know, it. Like, yeah, he looks like kind of like. You know, like those WWF wrestlers in the back in the day when they look hard and, and like mean and and Hulk like Hogan. yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, the whole is as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it was. I, I was somebody. And then Hayden apparently got some stick at um running club on Thursday, which is good. He's he's in Dublin. We've got to give him and his missus a shout out. The good news is the people of Surrey are safe tonight. He's not gonna, you know, end up in your house recording this podcast because he's in Dublin. Mind you, he could end up in somebody's house in Dublin, I suppose, couldn't he? Yeah, um, quite possibly. Yeah. So um, but we are doing Movember, people. If you don't know what that is. Oh, just dinner came back up. Um, if you if you don't want to eat, Google it. I had dinner like three minutes. One of the reasons I was late. Um, but yeah, definitely Google that, please, and find out about it because it's a movement. It's a charity, but it's a movement as well. It's about men's health, and we are making uh, and bringing awareness around the issues, important issues around surrounding men's health, which are uh, mental health, um, suicide prevention. In men, yeah. we're also uh, the charity uh, talks a lot about and supports testicular cancer and prostate cancer. Four really mm-hmm. important things that we are massively behind here on this uh, YouTube channel and in the Forty Runs universe. That is us. Um, so we're all growing moustaches to bring attention to those issues. You can sponsor us, you can donate, but that's not the reason why we're doing it. We're doing it yeah, to raise is, awareness yeah. around these issues. We'll just give the yeah, just give the just giving shout just giving dot com slash long run show I've, I've got my peaky blinders hat on now so i'm gonna go i like yeah actually, you do look a bit peaky blinder that's a good shout for you you, you are you do look this a is an peaky peaky this blinders. is actually this is an official peaky blinders hat it's is got it peaky how much does that set you back how much that set you back? best 20 quid ever spent that that has worn by Cillian murphy Right, but anyway, right, and you may notice ours dropped out ours having a few technical problems so don't worry we're going to try and get him back but I need to start, uh, apart from all the other niceties, but I need to start the podcast on a bit of a on a Debbie Downer, okay? Now, and I apologise now. All right. Before you start, can I just offer a disclaimer that <laughs> all I've had is I'm going in two-footed. I've had videos of sort of non-league footballers <laughs> kicking people up in the air. Don't worry, you can rely on me. So yeah. I have not got a Danny what he's going to go on about now. Bill, Wilco, so, you can't. Wilco, you can't now. You're not in the witness of the witness box yet, right? So when this guy, <laughs> when you get yourself now, what it is, right? I tell you how this all came about, right? So I'm guessing a lot of you are probably in the same boat at the moment. Maybe you are. Maybe. Oh, by the way, Tove, I've got the right mic on tonight. Look, sorry, last week I had the wrong mic on. Do I sound? It sounds like it. Yeah. Okay. So if you great, listen mate. to last week, anyway, just keep so talking. We was we was uh, figuring out the the plan for next year in terms of races, right? Uh, and there was one race that came up and said, I'll be doing this race. Now that is the big half. Okay. That came up in March. And if you saw the video last year, none of us were that impressed. When I talk about that, the four of us who did it weren't, weren't that impressed. And we, we spoke openly about it, why we wasn't impressed on here. Um, and it came up again today. But then in amongst those discussions, because we've got Manchester Marathon, in April, and then I've got London. So we was trying to find a decent half marathon. So if you know a decent half marathon in March, um, go on to, what is it, Wilco? What, the email? No, the thing, the, email, the contact thing. 40runs.com slash long run. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Right, so go to there. Tell us a good flat half marathon in March because we want to do it. But anyway, a... Um, Somebody raised an issue that I wasn't aware of, because if I was aware of it, I would have gone two footed a long time ago. So the big half, a friend of ours, oh, I'm not going to name, um, but they had, I'm not going to say which way, but they had needed to defer the big half, right? Because of a, because of an operation they needed to take, right? 
They contacted the London Marathon events. London Marathon events they said no. Right? They then sent him a doctor's note, I believe. By the way, this is all what I believe. This is, you know. And then they said no. Why why is it if you've got a doctor's note, can't they let you defer? I don't understand that. If someone if someone needs medical attention, mm. right? That they that they can't take part in a 35 quid event. London Marathon events, right, makes millions from selling virtual medals to people, right, and they and they make millions out of it. I don't know what they do with it, whether they stick it in their tr- into the trust and give it to you know athletes and all that and do good with it. Fair play to them, but they make millions. It's a machine, okay. If someone goes to them and says, "I can't do the big half because I've got to have an operation," and is my doctor's no? Surely, common sense would say, now, you, I appreciate, you know, some people might take the mickey and, and, and whatever and go, do, but mm. surely common sense would say, you know what, fair play, you know, you've gone and got a doctor's note, which I think sometimes you have to pay for now, right? If you've gone to that trouble yeah. to get a doctor's note, for the sake of 35 quid, why didn't they not let that person defer? I think it's absolutely disgusting that they didn't. Terms and conditions aside, right? I think it's absolutely disgusting that not, no common sense was shown there. No no sort of human element was shown there. Somebody's gone, you said, I've got to have an operation. Any chance you could let me off the 35 quid roll me into another time, right? And they've said no. I think it's absolutely outrageous that London Marathon events, the amount of money that they make from their events, can't have the decency as other human beings to turn around and say, fair play to you. Mm-hmm. Look, here you go. So my point to you is I'm now boycotting the big half. I refuse to do that event because those people are out of order. I'm going to send them an email because I only found out about this today and I'm going to ask them to comment on why they did that. And then so give them the right to reply and come back to me. But I think it's absolutely disgusting that they that they wouldn't let that person off, even though they had to have surgery and they provided the doctor's name. Maybe I'm being out of order, but I think it's about time again that somebody stood up for I see everyday runners and said that that's too much. That's too, that's too far. Mm. What do you think, Wilco? Well, yeah, I think, I think, um, yes, I, I completely sympathize with your point of view. I think that, that, that is rough. You know, we do know people who do, you know, prep. Well, we don't know people because they're not the sort of people that we know, but we, uh, we can, I can imagine that people do sort of abuse, try and abuse this yeah, system yeah. sometimes when they haven't done stuff. What yeah. I'm wondering is these, these events have to be, um, have to be licensed, don't they? Hmm. Now, why isn't there a uniform rule in your license about deferrals? Why don't people say, this is what you're allowed, you know, if you produce a doctor's certificate and you can't run, you are entitled to your money back or something like that as part of the licensing procedure. And then everybody would go under the same rules all the time for all events and everybody would know where they stand. I mean, regardless of whether it you we feel it's... Um, you know, it's unjust that in these circumstances, people, you know, if surely there's room for either there's room for a bit of leeway or there's room for a more a relaxation of rules that are generally yeah. applied to all events. Yeah, I just I just I just get annoyed when it's not co- when um when there's no common sense applied. Do you know what I mean? And. I get why there's there's some procedures in place because you are right. Unfortunately, we live in a world where people do take the mickey, right? That's that's life, and you know, for whatever reason, it is what it is. But I think when it comes to something serious, like to to say to somebody, "I've got a doctor's note," to not let them off the thirty five quid. I mean, it's only thirty five. They might again, they made millions out of these events. I think London Marathon events, apart from like all the what's it Mickey taking they did before with all dragging us to the expo when we all caught COVID and all this sort of stuff. I mean, they've just, they, they, I don't know what's going on at that place, but they need to sort themselves out and they need to have that little bit more of a, I've spoken about it before, that mm. human element, you know, when you try and contact them and, and they come back, they just need yeah. a little bit more. I just, well, I don't know. Uh, Mark Hurdy Gurdy runs like that. Great name, mate. Um, this year I got a DVT um, in my left leg after the Seville Marathon. I couldn't run the Derby Half Marathon, and they agreed to defer on site of a doctor's note. They were fab. Yeah, that's, that, that makes that makes perfect perfect sense. Yeah, Vitality Ten K, Mark London same Marathon box. events. It's the same people. This is my point. So London Marathon events, they're getting an email uh, on Monday. 
And I'm going to see what they, I, I guess they won't reply. Cause again, it's this, it's this mentality of we're too big. We don't care about the everyday runners. They're quite happy to take your money when you do a virtual marathon with them all day long. So anyway, they're now. Oh, certainly. I mean, up. please like, like Mark has, Mark's just mentioned in the comments, if you've been in this particular situation and your yeah, issue has been not. resolved, you know, Absolutely. drop us a line, Sorry. let us know. And then we can, we can say when we get in touch with, um, LM events and discuss it with them. You know, we can say, well, um, one of our one of our um, listeners um, had the issue at, at Seville and then went to Derby and Derby gave them the money back. Why can't you do that? Yeah, well, I don't know. It's not even the money back issue. It's a deferral. Just give them a space mm. next year. I mean, that's that's not. We're not asking for. We're not asking you to lose money, right? We're just mm. saying, give the opportunity for a deferral. I mean, that's just common sense. Again, right, hmm. just a spoiler alert. I don't have exactly all the facts. I heard about this just before I come on. I went nuts because of the person involved. I think there's an amazing human being anyway. Um, but I just it just riled me up. So maybe I've got some of the facts wrong. But if that is the case, because somebody just else said it about the Vitality 10K, they wouldn't let them defer, then it's just really disappointing. And um, yeah, so that's so Wilco, you can relax a little bit. I've got it off my chest. You all right with that? Yeah, I, that I was pretty good. Today. I'll tell you what, the sizzle was a bit more of the sausage there, wasn't it? You yeah, built see, that got, up. But Wilco, you've got to remember, you're a little bit sensitive. So sometimes it is fun. Well, just yeah, to I do. You know, well, I'm having a busy time, you know. Yeah, I know. It's a lot of stress cup, in my life. It is the I have to cup. deal with you um, every Friday with your five o'clock messages about I'm going in two footed and all that. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, right, so we get to. Let's go, we're, yeah, we're still without Alan at the moment, unfortunately. He's got some technical issues. Hopefully, we can get him on at some yeah. juncture, which would be great. But I think we should try and move on to our main subject for the on. evening, Christopher. Yeah. Oh, hang on. We've had a question. We probably had quite a few questions. So sorry. Keep everything coming in the chat. We will get to. I know we've lost out, but um, head torch or body torch. We was talking about this the other day. Sorry, we'll go. We will. No, that's fine. Mate, you can't come. If you're on your run, bear with us. We will we will get to these points. Uh, but we was talking... No, was he on our run? No, it's Thursday. I was talking to this with Simon because we was uh, setting up a, a coaching session. We had head torches on. And we was like, man, this, this is this is the best way. And then, I don't know about you, but for me, a head torch gives me a headache. Um, so I wear a um, chest torch when I remember to turn the bleeding thing on. Because I, I always think I've turned it on. I always forget that I haven't turned it on because finally yes. I then start talking and forget that I do stuff. Um, but can't decide between the head torch. So let us know what you think's best. What do you wear, head torch or body torch? Now, for me, right, firstly, health and safety, ideally both. I <laughs> just put that out there. But what I've found is if it's if it's like got decent like street lamps up above, I think a body torch is okay. I can tilt it down. If it gets a little bit, you know, underfoot, maybe some leaves, I can tilt it down, I can see where I'm going. Uh, but in general, if the light's okay, I prefer a chest torch. If it's one of those you're running along and it's hardly any street lamps, I mean, again, use both, but I think then a head torch is better because you can you can see down under where your feet are going a little bit. But obviously, you've got to bear in mind, unless you've got one of those ones that's got a light in the back, people will can't see you from behind. So I think it, it depends where you're running. I know it doesn't help, but my personal preference is a chest um, lamp because yeah. uh, I can play around with it. Although a head torch is pretty awesome. What about you, Will? We're at the um, we're at the st well. This November is unseasonably mild, isn't it? So, um, but what I tend to do is I'm I'm I like a chest torch. I always wear that, but also as well, I've got a beanie with a headlight in it, which are a lot yeah, more. We sell them on the Forty One store, Wilco. Good plug. Yeah, we've got some of them. Yeah, so they are. They, it's really good. You know, you just press the button on the thing and it goes. You charge it up and yeah, you normal charger. Charge. That is, you they know are that they're is really good. good. Yeah, because those beanies. They, if, actually, when you've got the really sort of like the straps and all that, you can feel a bit weird. Particularly, you know, if you're used to wearing something on your head like I am, I often run in a baseball cap. So, yeah, yeah, I get one. No, I've got one. They, you know, they're good value. They're on the um, forty runs website. So yeah, I, I don't know how much they are, but they're they're on there. Actually, that's a good shout. I might, I haven't got one of them. I might actually get one of them for when it's really cold, because then you do, especially when I'm commute running, which I am now. Mm. That would be the best of both worlds. So, um, yeah, that's a good shout. So, whoever put that in, thank you, because that's just made me think about um, getting anything. But we uh, we got the chest ones. I've, I've done a review on it from years ago. 
off an Amazon one. It was like 15 quid, right? And they're brilliant. They are really. Don't mm. don't be paying like 30 quid on, you know, whatever. But, you know, you can you can easily pick one up on, on, on Amazon, especially with Black Friday coming up, yeah? You can really... Oh, yeah. Now's um, the time. Philly really boost. Really crack on with it. We should have mentioned that. So just that we will get on to the points. Boys, what are you going for for Black Friday? Talk to me. I'm Tobe. looking for a pair of... Oh, no, oh, wait, Wilco. Because I want to make sure he's alive. So, no, what are you going for? No, time to think. No, I'm, I'm... we're putting you on the spot tonight, boy, since you've had a couple of weeks off. You can't eat I've got an active job I was very busy doing. Okay, we can have an I'll argument have about mind. that. Off, off. Yeah, go on. Mind? Mind? So, what are you going um, for? I've already, so I've already bought too much, so I don't think I've... Yeah, the treadmill has got... Have you, is the treadmill in, Toe? Have you told him how big it is? Oh, it is in, yeah, yeah. The treadmill? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's yeah. but it's the wrong size. He's bought the big, too big no, of one. No, it's not the wrong size. What do you mean it's, the wrong it's, size? It's in the conservatory. Oh, that Brilliant. fit in You house. said it only just fits in the conservatory. But that it still fits. I'm, I'm right? not having... No, anything is unable to fit in Toby's house. Yeah, that's Six true. Six of the there bikes is, now. It's so mentioned we can choose to cross-training. Bit of duathlon, yeah. You know how much cost Double training have you done? Down. What's that? How much? Half cost, how much? Tra- yeah, I was going to say you go on to Toby Strava. There's not much cross training been going on. There's in fact there's been no training going on. There's and no he's training not even yeah, started yeah. taper yet. Well, soon. You know, <laughs> Manchester taper starting soon. Right. So you you're not you don't know what you're buying. You're absolutely useless, Toby. You better get this well, show I'm on the road. I'm waiting on a few deliveries, so. You know, okay, right. We'll go. Go on in. I'd like a pair of trainers with a bit more grip on them to run down the um towpath in. Oh, well, Wilco, you're on fire tonight. So, yesterday I put a video out best winter running shoe, good lad, excellent plug again, Wilco, which we are right. So, that was the um spoiler alert A6 Nova Blast TR, right, which is a great shoe. Doesn't have any weatherized element to it, but it's a great shoe in terms of grip because you get the an awesomeness of the Nova Blast, but then you get decent out. So on that video is also the Pegasus 30, what model on 39 shield, which has got a really good outsell. A lot of people on that video were commenting about the Puma Velocity uh, WR winterized shoe, which has got Puma grip, which is the best outsells. But just a bit of a let you in on a secret thing, because I love you guys who do listen to this and watch this. We've got another video coming out, which is the best winter training marathon shoe, because I've got some other shoes that have been sent in to me. Actually, don't look over in that corner. Uh, put my hand down there. Um, but we've got some other shoes that have been sent in to me, some more of these uh, winterized weatherized shoes, but are, are really ideally suited for those sort of longer runs and sort of some more of that distance. So they're a little bit more cushioned, um, and we're going to be getting them out um this weekend starting this weekend so that video will pop up um probably in two weeks i guess so um there's loads of shoes out there we'll go but i would have a look at that video seriously the the a6 nova blast tr is fantastic um and but i was wearing you know that rain we had on what was it wednesday wednesday it was oh like, blimey did it rain it was like someone had just was pouring buckets of water over your head as you were running along i was running in the pegasus 39 shield the grip was amazing and my feet weren't like completely sodden they're not they're not brilliant in terms of feel um uh, you know cushion you know the the no blast is much better but the traction was honestly you ask how at the guys how i don't even know why they came out but it was so wet but the the shoes were amazing so yes right so look let's get into it we, go will are we gonna crack on or what yeah come on i've, I've given you let's enough plugs for your bloody website yeah <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, Come so on. we're talking about sort of like those first steps and either in recovery to get back into running or if you haven't run before, um, if you're looking to sort of like couch to 5K, things like that, stuff to think about. So a bit like last week, we had a um, we had a list of stuff, didn't we? I'm going to like present the list that Chris has me and then, yeah. then we, we can talk about it. Yeah, let's go through it. Well, let's go through it. I can't oh. remember how many there was on there. Was it six, five, something like that? Seven. We got. Oh, yeah. Go on. And, uh, yeah, let's rattle through them. And before we do that, give a shout out to Sketchers. Someone just mentioned about the Max Road Sixes. Uh, you'll know once I get them. Um, hopefully so. Go on. Right, let's go. Okay. So the first thing that we wanted to talk about when you're getting back is 
please don't be afraid to start walking. Yeah. I, you know what? That's that's a really good one to start on because I think, and I think it's, it's it, I think it's a good one it, it, in general, actually, about walking. I think there's this misconception that, yeah, I, you know, I've got to, I can't walk. I can't walk. Well, you can walk. It doesn't matter. You know, as long as it's, it's not one of those where you start walking and walking and walking. There's a reason why the Gal- the Galloway method, you know, the Jeffing is so popular because it's, you know, they take walk breaks, but it's, you know, it's at certain times and, and it's done at a certain way. And, and those guys absolutely smash the life out of marathons. So, so look at it. Right. But I think when you're starting out, it's really important to break yourself in and by adding walking breaks in at certain, you know, specified times. So like, and maybe you're doing a catch to 5k or like you say, coming back from injury. But doing those walking breaks for a set period of time will help you because it will help you, you know, it will just bring everything back a little bit. You're not hitting your, yourself so hard and you're, and you're doing everything in a nice, steady, easy sort of rhythm, you know, in terms of your walk running. And it's just building you up really, really slowly and your fitness. You've really got to really, be, really, really you, you know, rushing into things. I saw, I've said this before. I saw loads of this during lockdown, particularly when people could only run and they got all their other sort of, physical activities weren't available to them so lots of lads who played five aside and things like that they'd be like right i'm gonna go running and then they'd go tearing off and then they'd do 5k and oh, i'm gonna break five i'm gonna break half an hour i'm gonna break 25 minutes i'm gonna do yeah. 10k a day yeah. two weeks later oh i've done my hamstring injured. and they didn't yeah. do it again you just, yeah i'm walking I'm, I'm right. great exercise anyway so you can ease your way into it that's what i i would suggest yeah I, I, that is exactly it's, it is all about easing your way into it and by and, and that, there, that's that's the point there is a way like the couch to 5k is is a walk run it starts off as a walk run most of the time yeah and there's a reason for that because mm. you're building that fitness you're building that aerobic base the best way to do that is by doing walking and running yeah you know, unless if, you're I, one if of i'm just bringing um yeah, if i'm on. just bringing nick's comment in here nick smith he says i've been coming back from covid and been doing four minutes run and one walk has got exactly. me back into running i could not exactly. have done it otherwise Start off right. A great ratio is to start and go three minutes run as slow as you can, one minute walk. Yeah, try that mm. if you're starting out. Try and control your breathing, but just do three minutes and one mm. minute, and then extend the three minutes to a four minute, and then you'll go, mm. you know, maybe five minutes and maybe you know, mm. drop it down a little bit, or don't go four minutes and thirty seconds, and find a ratio that works for you. But by adding that walking in, it can really, really help, and it's the same principle. If you're if you're getting into you know training for a half marathon, let's say maybe you're you've got to work your way up to you know twelve odd miles, and it's again there's nothing wrong by taking a break during some of that longer runs, whether it be why you're having to take a gel, you know walk and take that gel and then carry on, or if if you're hydrating, walk along and have a drink and then carry on. Um, it's mm. it's the really it's a really important thing. You don't have to be out there slogging it out okay mm. there's nothing wrong with walking and i think that's why it was it was one Does of the that'll affect ones. your mental that won't just affect you physically that will make you oh i can't do it you'll get it yeah, exactly. get in your head as well i'll exactly. just bring alan on this because he's just managed to join us and say you know how we're talking about um people not being afraid to start walking you know when they're picking up and getting back into it yeah just pick up on what chris has said is i think about it in your walk so it is it as you say, I'm broken, I'm defeated. It's I'm you know, a break from the, the run. Um I know lots of people at walk stations they have to take a walk. So you know, make sure it's it's part of your your schedule. It's not about you know, you know failure because you've had to stop or you've had to yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's not failure. It's not failure. It's um, it, it, I I I I don't understand why people think it's a failure if you're walking. It's simply not. Um, it's like that, oh, I I did a marathon and I didn't and I didn't walk. Well, good for you. Um, but there, there's absolutely nothing wrong with walking. And I think that's and it, and it is a really important point to start these sort of tips and how tos off and hacks. Let's call them, just to have that in the back of your mind that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with walking. Right, what's the next one? It says, in your words, when in doubt, find a training plan. Yeah. And that and and I reason I put that in is because if you're 
wanting to do catch to 5k let's say in january get the nhs app right it's free go and get it we're not saying go to 40 runs and get a coaching personalized track that's not what we're here for right we're just saying although if you want to do that you can but if you the you know the nhs is a great source uh, of knowledge right there's also other plans available for free online that you can use if you're struggling with and we spoke about it last week trying to get that consistency and and, and all that kind of stuff um go online and try and find a plan there's there's, there's nothing mm. better sometimes than actually having that structure of being in a plan and if you're coming back from injury maybe you you know you you've literally <laughs> just bought a pair of shoes and gone, I'm going to start running in the new year because I've got the Great North Run, then get yourself a plan, yeah? that That's the thing because it will help you. It does It does send your mind because if you don't have a plan, um, you, you can be a little bit out there. You can start doing stuff like a bit funky. You can go and start running like one minute you're doing 10K, next minute you're doing 1K because you're a little bit sore and all this sort of stuff. It, it's, mm. it's difficult. So, I've just seen in the comments, by the way, you'll get absolutely hammered for saying nothing. Uh, does anyone else play speed goat roulette? Yeah, I do, Mike Gibson. How many words Toby will say throughout the podcast? I do play. I do play this. He usually says between two and three. Um, and Barbara has absolutely that, nailed him and says Toby says nothing. Toby, you're going to have to. I think we're going to have to do. But to be fair to people, right? I'm going to give Toby, which is really hurts me. I'm going to give him some credit. What I would say to you is, please listen to the bonus episode. If you want to hear Speed Goat talk and Speed Goat talk well, listen to that bonus episode we did. It's about 30 odd minutes and he says more than two words. And it actually genuinely is. It's really annoying to say. It's actually quite good because he, he actually mm. spoke quite well. Then he will come. The thing about Toby is, though, he makes up for so much of his technical expertise that we couldn't cope with. And you demonstrate on regular occasions when he's not here. So yeah, last we, week love him, you know, we love him. He's like, I've always said he's like our oh, Charlie Watts. He just plays at the back and everything else would just fall apart if it wasn't for him. Yeah. So, so um, be I'm nice jumping on the game wagon and going in two-footed on toe because I owe him an immeasurable debt for his technical expertise. What I will say, yeah. going back to um, plans, yes. is that talking about my own personal experience, when I did my first two or three um, half marathons, I just blagged it really. I didn't have a plan at all. But then when <laughs> um when I got to when I got to the stage where I thought I'd like to um do a marathon, then mm. for um the Great North Run, which was my fourth one, I thought I've got to try and follow a plan because if I'm not able to do a plan, I won't be able to do a marathon. So now's the time to right. find out. So I Actually, did that and I saw a marked improvement in my performance for that fourth half marathon because I'd had the 12 weeks regular pattern of yeah, yeah, yeah. practice someone training. just mentioned about coming back from injury in the in the in the chat and i think that sometimes your physio as well could if you say to your physio right what what should i do they might be able to like put you something mm. together all right they're not qualified as like running code whatever but obviously they, they know what they're talking about so um that that might be worth doing if, if you're seeing a physio or, or whatever ask them say what do you think's realistic um uh yeah, so just yes, yeah, see, 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 seek. Sorry, seek some form of uh, structure around your running, starting out, becoming a runner, whatever it is, whatever stage you are in your running, putting mm. some structure into stuff. Tends and and to if work. you've done the couch to five k, you've gone for a plan already, so you know you can do it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. That is true. Right, what's our next one? Our next one: don't run every day. Start smartly and safely. I I touched on this a minute ago, but about the five side mm. boys, didn't I? You know, that's a pitfall. Mm. Yeah. Al, while well, we got yes before before we drop that again. For yeah, I think you know, depending on whether you are or whether you are still building running every day, while we've had people on the show and we're gonna go off and celebrate a few days hopefully at the beginning of the month um your body mentally and physically so striking that and keen because you're new and wanting to go out there and and, and recognizing that you run the, the risk of injury fatigue and, and in the long run could actually end up doing yourself you know more, more harm for, 
physically and mentally. We'll have you know, a couple of rest days uh, anyway. So my advice. Yeah, I think actually you made a good point because we've got the um, those big. It's a good plug as well. Well played. Um, on third uh, of December, come to Clapham, please, if you can, um, because we're celebrating uh, Ben and N's and an N. Sorry, they sound like the same person, isn't it? Um, we're celebrating their um, one thousandth day of running. So we're talking about mm. don't run every day. They've been doing it for a thousand days each. Now we're not recommending that. Uh, they're just heroes. Um, and there's other people in the group, in the community. If you're not joining that, join the Facebook group. But there's people in there who have been doing for longer than that. They're amazing. Um, but we're celebrating that on December the 3rd at Clapham Park Run. Please come along. Obviously, it's Park Run, so it's free, uh, which is great to see you. We're all going to run around uh, and make nuisances of ourselves. But, yeah, it's, I think with, with running every day, it's, um, you don't need to run every day, people. If you're, you're like, if you look at a Couch to 5K program, it, does, it doesn't say run every day. And if you're coming back from injury, Please don't run every day. You know, again, you get what Wilco said. You just need to build up nice and steady and, and take it, you know, sensibly. I think that, and that's the key. And it's the same whether you're marathon training. Let's say you've got a marathon place next year. You need to do the same thing. You just need to build slowly. Okay. It's a marathon, not a sprint, people. That counts to your training as well. If you're out there going, I've got a London marathon place. I'm going to run every day. Hmm. I can probably tell you how that's going to end. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just take it easy. Like everything with running, you know, do a Wilco 60%. You'll probably just, just be about right. Don't you think Wilco? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Or do what Tobe does and do nothing. And do no percent. (laughs) So what do you think about that? What, taking a rest? I think you need plenty of rest days. I think it works rather well. (laughs) <laughs> and then the off bit of running every now and again. And then buy a yeah. treadmill and look at it. <laughs> Has it got dust on it yet, Toby, your treadmill? I haven't really been in the have you started, have you started, I haven't really been home. Have you started hanging have you packed- clothes on it and things like that? You know? No, because that involves <laughs> doing the washing. Furniture. That involves doing the washing. I ain't doing that. <laughs> so, so, That's terrible. So you've done that. Oh, yeah. dear. Poor old if you'd, if you'd, so, Yeah, please contact us at 40runs.com slash long run if you think that you could help toby domestically and uh, sort out his washing yeah. and make sure that yeah, but, he doesn't hang up any of his clothes on his new wear uh, but don't because don't now. forget his fiance might get a bit upset if he starts getting you know contacted by men or women do you know what i mean so remember he's, Toby's he's, not, yeah, he's got to get you know he's got to raise his game if he's going to you know yeah it's true weddings if next he, year he, people you know, you know what moving to into different circumstances yeah i make you right right what's the next point Wilco? The next point is focus on minutes instead of miles. No, oh, but this is, I think, yeah, it's really important for, I think it's important for everybody, this one. I, I genuinely do. Right, so I'll tell you what, let's go around. Who runs to who runs to distance and who runs to time? Al, do you run to distance or do you run to time? It's mainly miles. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so it's mainly distance. Distance. Probably right, done time? that for most of my running career. I'm normally just, I mean, I'm not known for rounding up my miles. Don't tell lies. Just running, running around a car park, just trying to get. So to you've got to run. Mile. You've got to run before you can actually do a mile. But yeah, go on. So when you do run, do you do you run to time? Distance. Do you go out Meters. and say I'm going to run <laughs> three hours, or do you say yeah. I'm going to run two two miles? What do you What do you do? Distance, always distance. Okay, Wilco. Yeah, I'm the same. I do distance. So okay, so do you think that's because? We've done. We've been round the block a few times. We've been on this rodeo a little while, and we've learnt out how you know. Or do you think that's because that's the way you've trained from day one? It's not the way I've trained from day one because, and I think this is common for quite a lot of um, plans, particularly for half marathons and things like that. If you look at, invariably, if you're on a website, say um, there'll be plans for different levels. For people so there'll be like a beginner's plan there'll be an intermediate plan there'll be an advanced plan and if you look at them all three of them you'll see the difference that invariably the beginner plan will be in minutes it will say yeah. your longest run will be about two hours and yeah. you know a lots of 20 minute runs 30 minute runs things like that and it will it will not be complicated it will just be like go out at this pace and run at this place if you go to the advanced one obviously the um the volume of running tends to increase 
but also it will be in miles and it will be talking about different paces and things like that. So sure. the beginning plans, which is probably where we're at, if you think about it, if you're if you're cut either looking to build up your distances, having done couch 5k or you've done a few 10ks and things like that, or if um, you're coming back from injury and you want to ease your way back into it to get going again, then minutes is probably the way to go. But like Chris says, if you've been around the block a few times and I, I just find that with miles that I've got certain routes, I know what a five mile route is. I know what an eight mile route is or a 10 yeah, mile true. route. And I will just run that at different paces. I think for different um, sort of workouts. Well, yeah, it's that good point. Well, I look, I I write quite a few plans, yeah. And if you're and and they tend to be if you're starting out, they tend to be given to you in in time based, yeah. And I think a lot of that is one to keep it simple, but two to take some of that fear out of the distance. Because if you stick down and go this weekend, you've got to run ten miles. You're going to go what ten miles? That's yeah. not, that's, no, never doing that. Uh -uh. But if I say to you, you've got to run for an hour and 30 minutes, you'll go, well, actually, if I run 45 minutes out, I can run 45 minutes back. Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah. See, it's a, it's a lot more digestible, commutable. And, it, and you're looking at your time instead of panicking about the distance. Mm. And it just takes a lot of that stress and a lot of anxiety away. For anybody, and it's a it, it really important with like couch to 5k over that, you know, it's like you're going to be running eventually for 30 minutes, full, and then we'll take you to 40 minutes or whatever it is to get you to that 5k, but you will be able to do it, especially if you run walking. And it's that same principle. So, I, I personally like to write plans that are a bit of a hybrid because I like to keep it simple, especially in the week where everybody's lives are so mental. If you can get out and run for 45 minutes, you know, with a warm up and a cool down, but that main block is 45 minutes or that main block is 30 minutes. It's a lot more digestible. Mm. It is it's a lot more. And, and I try and, and mix the two up and then maybe, yeah. you know, your long run will say, actually, this weekend, I want you to run for, you know, your 10 miles. At yeah, often, I, I mean, often if you look at those plans, that's the case. The only mileage that is offered is Sunday on the long run. Long run. I mean, yeah, my brain, right. um, related to that, Chris, and I, I just, you know, I'm the only one here with the four of us who hasn't got a coaching qualification, so I don't know. But um, as somebody who sort of like does his long runs for his marathon training at a sort of like 11 minute miles, just a little bit more than that, sometimes I find that if I'm doing a 20 miler, I'm out on the road for nearly sort of like three, three, quarter, uh, three and three quarter hours, four hours. And I wonder sometimes whether mm. that's doing me any good. And really, I should just cut down and just do the three hours, just do a three hour run. Al shaking his head. So, Al, fire. If this, this hope, come on. A bit technical. Come on. And then come back to the, the, the time over this. About recovery, Wilco. Anything, you know, above about three, three hours, be on a plan where you're running four or five times ability to recover. And, you know, the song there's anything to the point where you're teaching yourself to deal with fatigue you're teaching yourself to fuel in a half four hours you're the the, the benefits of that outweighed significantly by the the impact on your body so I, i'd always say long runs three, three hours max in you that, mm. that leaves you in terms of distance um about running for time and in the early days it takes the pressure off because so you run at a level you feel comfortable you run at a level you feel comfortable at for 40 minutes should it be 6 37 a kilometer or a, you know 909 it doesn't matter because you're only out there for 20 minutes as you say chris and then and yeah as you, you start to build into the plan you're going to whether you start to cover more distance and how you feel it's at that point then you start thinking about you know the base and everything else that goes with it yeah bang on absolutely absolutely on the money as always um yeah i think i think that actually you know what we can't really talk about that much more have we now it boys don't we? <laughs> what's the next one we'll go <laughs> balanced diet oh 
Well, Co. Do you want me? Talk about my diet? I lost three pounds no, this week. Tope, this is not where you talk. Tope, what? you're not allowed to say nothing. Right? I know what, whoever it was was giving you a really hard time. Some of it a bit unfair. But was giving you a hard time earlier. But you're not allowed to say nothing about a balanced diet. Wilco, I'm willing to talk to because he's trying. You you just don't try. I do sometimes. Sometimes. You don't you spend how can you, how can you a balanced diet on sometimes? How can you eat a balanced diet sometimes? Because as long as you have Wilco. like the veg alongside the rubbish, then it counts. The salad. No, the veg. You no, visit salad. the salad cart as well as the pizza. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, you yeah. can't talk to the boy. You can't. So, Wilco, let's talk about nutrition because you're in the midst, let's say, of tidying up your diet. Is that a fair way yeah, of saying? Yeah, I'm quite pleased. I lost three pounds this week, good which you, I think bruv. is quite a good. Um, I mean, people uh, yeah, try and suggest good. that two to three pounds a week is a good rate. I've been very good. I've cut out. I've cut out all the. There's no biscuits. Yeah. There's no crisps. You know. All that sort of stuff that's very easy to eat when you're working from home and you're not, you mm -hmm. know, some days you're not doing much. You don't leave. I mean, like today, I've not left the flat, you know, so mm. because it's been a busy day and I've had this and yeah. loads of other stuff going on. But, um, yeah, I'm feeling better and I'm feeling better mentally. I'm sleeping. I think I've slept better this week than I have perhaps before. Well, we, but we then spoke last week, that, I mean, we diet and I suppose that it. Sleep it is sort of like linked to all that, isn't it? You know, oh, and um, I feel like I'm I'm resting better and I'm feeling better in myself. And I've been out for a couple of runs and they've gone pretty well. So fingers crossed. Just, I just I could just, just do with losing a bit of timber, really. So that's the main motivation. Yeah, yeah I think you know you, you hit a certain age and you know you think to yourself, Jesus, you know. And look, it's a that's a really good thing, right? And so into looking after yourself into M November, right, guys? Really important. Just you know. Check yourself, testicular cancer, Google it. I'm not going to talk about it on here because our ladies listeners are probably going, Jesus Christ. So go on to Google and check it. Yeah, go testicular cancer and, and how to check yourselves. It's a really important issue. It's the same with prostate cancer. You've got any issues down there, boys, go and get yourself checked. You should always be getting yourself checked anyway when you hit a certain age. Really important to check that over, okay? Good good segue, Wilco. Important to check it out while we do Movember to make sure that you boys are looking after yourself on that side of things. And we talk about weight as well. And I think weight also, as you say, Wilco, it helps your mental health. Again, good links into the Movember thing. You know, and and, it, and there is there is links between what you're putting in and how you're feeling and how you, you know, you're behaving and all that sort of stuff. If you're eating junk, then you know, you that's what you're gonna get out. But when it comes into relation to the running, the reason I put that in there. Is because what you tend to happen is you you start running again, or you're back running, or you maybe you're picking up your distances. So another person out there who maybe is going from 10k to half marathon distance, you do find that your metabolism speeds up a bit, and you're going, you know what, I could do with another couple of biscuits, um, and you go and smash your life out then. But you you don't need them. It's just your body trying to get you to 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 do that, and you don't need them. So I'm not saying don't fuel, don't eat. I'm not a nutritionist in any shape or form, but just remember, you old saying. I think is Al told me this one uh, is don't out train a bad. You can't out train a bad diet. It's one of our classics, I think. Um, mm. And it's true. It's really, really important. You you can't. So just I would say just be aware of what you're eating and 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 when you're eating it in terms of mm. like timing and stuff like that because it, it can make a difference. I will say as well that if you're go if you're embarking on um, couch five k say and you've got a few weeks in that naturally you'll be pl so pleased with the contribution that you're making physically and getting out and getting more exercise that sometimes mm. the food thing will look after itself a little bit because you yeah. do tend to, you won't be, you find you, that you're not drinking so much and you'll find that, well, I don't want to go, you know, I don't want to go and do all my exercise all week and do a thing and then throw it away by having a big kebab yeah. on a Saturday night and yeah. eight pints or something, you know. Which is, which is what you normally have before many, It becomes that. part of your... The, the exercise becomes part of your healthy lifestyle and your drinking and your food and things like that will fall in. It all takes care of itself, doesn't it? That's that's yeah. I think that's what you're saying is, is right. Well, I'm just I'm a bit worried because we've got like 10 minutes left. Uh, how many points have we got left? Go for it. Two. Oh, that's all right. Right, let's we've go. Really Next well. one. We've been spot yeah, on. We, yeah, sorry if we haven't got you in the in the chat and stuff. I, I've seen some of it. 
Um, but um, mm. yeah, it's one of those sessions today. But anyway, let's let's play out because we are adding a lot of value to the listeners today. There's, there yeah. is a reason why it is law in China to have to listen to this podcast while you run. Okay, it's, this is one of the reasons because of the amount of value. And this is the thing. Imagine what this would be like live. Yeah, we wouldn't have the technical issues because Toad would have sorted that out. It's going to be incredible. You're going to be you're going to be like a sponge soaking up the knowledge that we're going we'll to be giving to, you. We'll get so, to mid January and people will see me on stage and think he's slimmer than I thought he was. You know, he's they'll go, they'll, what they'll say, Wilco. They'll go, he's taller and he's more handsome than I thought he was. And then they'll look <laughs> at you and go, oh yeah, there's Wilco. What? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right, enough of this joshing about. Come on. And um, somebody's mentioned this, uh, Michael Gibson. I like to mix up workouts, time and distance base. Um, yeah. yeah, mix your runs up. Yeah, yeah, mix mix it up. If you're not in a plan, right, which you don't have to be. Again, it's not the law. Um, if you're if you're in a plan or you're trying, uh, you're not in a plan. So when you're trying to get into this running business, trying to you know whatever, get to a half marathon, whatever it is. By mixing up those runs, instead of just the point is, is not to just go out and slog it out. I know we've used that word before, but where you're just drilling out a run for the sake of drilling out the run. Al always says it, junk miles. Yeah, mixing up your runs will, will not only motivate you, but it, it, you'll benefit from it, especially if it's a little bit quicker. Maybe it's a little bit of a harder effort. It's an easier effort. 60% will go. Um, but your different runs, different routes. You know, different times of the day to go out and run. Um, you know, all this sort of stuff. It could be so refreshing if if you're unfortunate, you've got to, you know, run every night, and then because that's the only time to to maybe like I don't know, be a bit cheeky and book a half a day, and then get out in the morning and run. You can feel mm. amazing. Um, so I mix what I'd say up as well, your stuff make make it fun. I mean, I had yeah. a couple of I I got towards the end of my marathon training the other week um before dublin so this is about six about six weeks ago and i was like oh I've, i'm not inspired i'm going doing the same stuff all the time so i thought right i'm going to park at hartford town football club and i'm going to run to welling garden city football club and back again so just to do that another one i did in hartford one day i thought i'll do a little tour of all the churches so i went round and did sort of like out into the villages and went past, took loads of little pictures and things like that and just did like a little it, it was about 14 miles on a Sunday yeah. run, rather than just go up and down the river, I thought, oh, well, I'll go for a little tour. You know, yeah. think, oh, about, toe. think about toe. Think about stuff you can about do. your favourite run last year or this year, Toe. What, run from Welling? Yeah. That was good, yeah, yeah same thing. We did, we did, we we got dropped off at Welling and we ran back to um, Broxbourne. All new route. I think we were like over halfway and it just felt like, kind of, we hadn't really done much because we were just enjoying it so much. It's nothing we recognise, it's just, you, your head was in a completely different space. Novelty really helps, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, and company massive. was all right as well, some of it. Company was brilliant, Toe. Company was amazing. Was that um, better than going to Stansted? No, he I loved don't that. really remember much of Stansted oh. at the end of the morning, did you? Oh, Wilco, we've got some amazing stuff coming out next year. Oh, you just reminded me of some of the stuff we've, I've got planned for the boy next year. <laughs> It got that, not one of them's an absolute that. belter. So stay tuned, people. But make sure you subscribe to this wonderful YouTube channel because next year one of the challenges for Tobe is an absolute belter. Trust me, honestly. I'm not allowed to know what I it came is. up with this. No, we can't tell anybody, Tobe. Oh, you haven't told me. No, you you're not allowed no. to know. Why would we you're tell you? You're the last you? person to know. Yeah, it's last person. We, we can't have tell you nothing. Not yeah. We're not having you picking and choosing your gigs, mate. You know. Oh, yeah, exactly. Let's do that. No, no, no way. Absolutely no way. Right, mm. what's our last point? Because we've got six minutes. Our last point is remember why. Yeah. I think, I think, we say it all the time, don't we? Remember why. Remember the why. So, mm. for whatever... Maybe, maybe you're signed up to do because the marathon because you want to raise money for prostate cancer, for example. Right? We just spoke about that sort of stuff. Maybe because you want to lose weight, and like Wilco was just saying, you you're trying to do your dieting thing, but you need to do a bit of exercise to go along with that. So remember, when you're out there and you finally, I don't know, at two miles, and you're going, I've got to do another mile. Remember why? Um mental health maybe you know you're struggling with adhd and, and the best thing you can do is go out there and get some get some exercise and get some fresh air and get 
get everything pumping through you, which, you know, it's going to just calm some of that down in your mind. Maybe that's why you're running. Whatever it is, if it's Toby, because he likes to eat, whatever it is, just remember the why. It's really important. And it goes back to what you said, Will Kate. See the enjoyment factor of it mm. um, and bringing that, that element in. Because it can get hard, especially if you are. I tell you what, if you're doing Couch to 5K, and we we do a Couch to 5K program here as well, you know, that's hard, right? Or if you're coming back from injury and you're used to running at a certain level, and then you've got to come back, maybe like you said, Wilco, you've had COVID. Like, Al, remember when you had COVID and you went to, was it Copenhagen? And, and it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it was a tough one, wasn't it? 10 days after COVID. It's tough, yeah. And you, and you you have those you have those feelings of I I know I can I used to run like this. What's the matter with me? And it's yeah. it's hard. So remember why. I, I remember you know the the reasons why you're rocking up at Copenhagen to to try and get that to try and get that distance done. Even though you know because you've done all that hard training for it and and that and that sort of thing is it's really important. I think because we do get consumed by you know. Strava and we spoke about that and, and all the other things that go along with all this yeah. stuff. It is a pastime. It's a I whole mean, it all boils down. You're not doing it for anybody else. You're doing it for you, really. Yeah. Exactly. And that's and I think it that's a really what good other point. people are doing. It doesn't matter what they're doing. Doesn't matter what they think of what you're doing. No and actually, surprised. you know what? That is that's like a, a Brucey bonus tip. It is not to compare yourself to what other people are doing. So if you are mm. coming back, if you are going from 10k to half marathon if you are doing couch to 5k don't be comparing yourself to somebody else that may be doing it along the way with you or you've seen somebody or maybe they did it and they're there already don't look back mm. and compare what they did because that'll destroy you yeah don't don't ever compare yourself against other people because it, it it will it will undermine everything that you're doing so let that all go right you are your own person you're doing it for your own reasons and just and just remember why you're doing it and don't compare yourself to those other people because just I enjoy see your own time. journey it's the old thing isn't it about you being the, you know you're the leading actor in your life story you know you've just got to be like that and you're running as well and it's all about you yeah i've got to give a shout out you just remind me of something you've got i've got to give a shout out to simon he went out on his bike for the first time today oh <laughs> if that, if that ride 100 right he messaged us and said he's, he's going out on his first first bike ride 10 miles and <laughs> he said he loved it but he went out on his first bike race, got himself a new bike, right? So if, you, if you're new to all this long run show, 40 runs rubbish that we do, um, with next year, Tobe has signed us all up for to do a Ride 100, which I'm doing no training. I don't even have a bike. I'm going to do no training. I'm just going along with a sausage bike, sandwich. Bro. Right. I'm, well, I might, I might just borrow one from someone. But anyway, I'm, going, I'm doing this literally purely for a sausage sandwich. I'm doing no training. I refuse to do any, right? But so I bless him. He's got out, he's got, he's keen as mustard. He's got himself a bike today. He's taking it out for a spin. So I've got to give him a shout out because it's again, it's get like this. It's getting out of your comfort zone to do something. Necessarily new, like he used to cycle a bit, but to go back into doing something, he's now mm-hmm. going to go through the same sort of, these sort of things, but with cycling. So I've got to give him a shout out today because, you know, he's, at the end of the day, it's getting out of your comfort zone to do something, right? And as I know you shouldn't have to me. compare yourself to other people, Chris, but are you looking at him thinking, oh, well, he's got off his backside and he's doing a bit. Should I be going really and having a little poop around the villages or something just to show a bit of interest? If it was anything other than biking, yes. But I refuse. I think I've made it quite clear on this on this show. I refuse to do biking. OK, now I've got. I got sort of pushed into this because Tobe signed me up, even though I thought I wasn't. He signed me up. So I got pushed into this. So the only reason I'm doing this is to prove Tobe that you don't have to do any training. You can go along, eat sausage sandwiches, and ride about 100 odd miles, something like that. That's the only reason I'm doing it, right? But I'm well, not I wonder whether it. you're going to actually enjoy it and you're going to have a good time. I'm I'm, I'd it. be really, you know, I'm not you know, the I'm launch of um, 40 bikes. For three hours. You know. How long? How long is it going to take me to take three hours? Should we, should we go for eight? No. Right. So send an email in. What's oh, no, not an email anymore. What is it, Wilco? What's the website? It's forty runs dot com slash long run. Start. Someone Drops was saying about roulette there. earlier. Start now. We're starting a sweepstake. My time for 
<laughs> All right, 100. And not how many sausage sandwiches I'm going to have, because it's going to be a lot. But just put in there how long it's going to take me to do it. Do no training. What are they going to do about it? Nothing. Just with the cowboy oh. boots on as well. Yeah, I'm I'm going it. We've got our team. We've got our team set up. It's top secret at the moment. Can't divulge that. We'll give that information out in the new year. But we've got team. We're going to have team colours. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. But I'm doing. Are we done? No trade. But but yeah. Sorry, I, I was just proud of him because, in all seriousness, it, it, it's a it's a relatable thing. Yeah, we're talking yeah. about getting out of your comfort zone, doing something, coming back. You know, whatever it is, is the same applies for that. And I think he's, he's and also. Also, talking with Simon, that he had, um, he's been out his bike, you know, obviously a few weeks ago, he had his experience at Amsterdam, didn't he, with his, you know, when he hit the wall and it didn't go according to how it would have done. It may also invigorate his running too. Yeah, mate, you're right. It's, it's, I tell you, again, that cycling stuff, whether it's, well, cycling, swimming, whatever it is, you know, we spoke about it last week. Listen to that podcast, although my audio was terrible. Listen to it because we said about cross training, even PB Petra, who's a machine, said that she needs to get some strength working. So it's really, it really is important, people. So, you know, cross training and all that kind of stuff. But I just hope today that we've added some value to the, the runners out there who maybe are, you know, on the injury bench coming back, couch to 5K, or absolutely bricking it because they may manage to get a, a place in, you know, in the Great North Run or whatever. Mm. We wanted we wanted to do this, and as I said, because forty runs is five years old, and and you know we we always try to cover and 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 talk about stuff for the everyday runner. So we wanted to include everybody as always, it's, um, sort of stuff we try to do on this channel. Um, so it's really important that we touch on this today to try and and give it. And I hope, even if you're a seasoned runner, that some of this stuff has helped as well mm. today. So right, Wilco. Um, so over to you, bro. Yeah, Take us out. thanks everybody for your company this evening, Toby, for his technical guidance and value. And our, our sorry, mate, we didn't get as much you know as we would have liked. You know, we've had a few technical issues today, so that's not a lot we could do about that. Big shout out to to our sponsors, Sketches, and to you, our listeners and viewers, for your attention and your questions. We are on Facebook and YouTube every Friday at seven o'clock. But if you can't catch us then. You can always download us on your favourite podcast provider of choice, whether that's Spotify, Amazon, Apple. Write us a review on Apple. Send us soaring up the charts. Number two this week. We'd love to be number one for Christmas. That'd be great. So please send your reviews and spread the word. And you can listen to us in your own time if you download us on the show. So don't forget, if you've got a question, drop us an email to uh, drop us a message on 40runs.com long run and also if you've got any observations or anything you want to ask us find us on the um facebook group as well 40 runs you can get us there so enjoy your running this week stay safe wear your lights and we'll see you next week mm-hmm.